Hey everyone, my name is Tegan. Welcome back to Tandy Rights. Apologise for the lighting because there's only skylights in this room and um, I think the sun's setting. But yeah, welcome back to this video and this is a review of probably one of my favourite books of all time and this is actually the book that inspired me to start writing book reviews again and making these review videos. Even if I'm going to st eat, yeah, I'm rambling already. But I've decided I'm going to start reviewing only books that I do like, otherwise I'm be going to become a hub for negativity. And um, my, I think my first viewed video is a negative review for Showstopper, which is also my most disliked video because people disagree that I don't like racism. So, this book, before I get into it, I'm going to say my favourite book blogger, book reviewer, is Paper Fury, also known now as C.G. Drews, as she has written these books right here. But. I, I believe every single word she says and I was scrolling through his shelves looking for book recs because I think we have a similar taste in books and this little book came up and I thought hmm I've never heard of this before but Paper Fury has given it a five star glowing review and then this was a, probably a few years ago at this point and I just couldn't stop thinking about this book that I'd never heard of. This book is Teeth by Hannah Moskowitz. I don't have a physical copy of it yet where am I looking? Oh, I'm in here. I do have Salt, which I've read and I also loved, but not as much as Teeth. Teeth has taken over every single thought I have. Okay, so before we begin, even though we've begun, the, this following review contains um, spoilers regarding the ending of the book, and all, which would be at the end of this video, and in the review version, it will be in the final paragraph. And also a couple of mentions or specific scenes throughout this book, which may not be big spoilers, but could spoil it for you if you would like to go in blind. I wish I could explain why this book means so much to me and why it's taken over every single thought I have, but I simply just can't. I don't even know where to start. Like when I was writing this review, I was just sat in my empty word doc, just thinking, what, why, what even just happened? It's been a month maybe more by now, by the time you see this, um, since I read this book, and as you can tell, it takes up so much of my headspace. So I'm going to tell you a bit about it. If you read the blog version, which I will have linked in the description, you'll see a couple of my favourite quotes just in, in dispersed with the review, but we're just going to go straight in with this. So plot. I'm going to say I think this book might be British, but I, I, I can't tell for certain. It gives me British vibes. So, Rudy's family has moved to this remote island that I don't think is ever named or given like a location, but it's very remote. And the big thing about this island is that there's magical fish that can cure any serious illness. And his family moves there with the hopes to cure his brother's cystic fibrosis or to keep him alive long enough until he can get a lung transplant. This island is mostly populated by the elderly, helping to keep themselves alive. <laughs> so Rudy is the only teenager on this island. So he is like completely bored and lonely until he meets teeth <laughs> and they start a very tentative friendship and I love this because in the book usually when mermaid characters are described they're beautiful but teeth is described as the ugliest bastard to ever exist and he is half human half fish not quite a mermaid not quite a merman literally top half human bottom half fish he has human lungs, so he can't like breathe underwater properly. He can't swim very good. I love this like useless fish boy so much. So this Rudy and Teeth friendship is like completely flawed and dysfunctional because they both kind of hate each other. <laughs> but these characters are so beautifully written. And I was just in love with this complexity and this desperation and the charm. I didn't think I could describe Teeth as charming. But he kind of is in like, this very endearing, naive little way. And there's a lot I want to say about him, which would be a probably a big spoiler, or it's completely irrelevant to the review itself. It would just be me rambling about how much I love Fish Boy for 10 minutes straight. And there are some moments where I was having doubts about the story. Like, was it too dark, too depressing, too sad? But then Rudy and Teeth just stole my entire heart and I did not need to suspend my disbelief in Moskowitz's ability for just even a moment. 
and this book has made its way onto my favourites of all time list. And I'm gonna say a lot of things about this book seem to have a fan fiction quality, which I think is why I like it so much. It's this complete, I think Patrick Ness does it, Neil Gaiman does it. It's this complete like randomness that when you read it, you think there's no way this could happen, but they've convinced you. And I think that's also a thing that um, I see the most specifically in fan fiction, which you're gonna have to bear with me for this. But it, it's it's a book that has fan fiction qualities, not in a bad way. It's just it's this disbelief made believable. So I love the setting of this book so much because it reminds me of home. I because I live by the sea. I've lived here my entire life. These descriptions were so incredibly vivid, but it said so much in so few words. They're very sparse but very descriptive imagery. So yeah, I've lived my entire life within a 50 minute drive of the ocean in a small town and surrounded by like these storms and fishing villages and freezing cold salt water. And there's this sense of familiarity that fully brought me into this world that I know so little about, but it's so familiar. And I was just there reading it and it was almost like I could smell the salt in the air and feel the sea breeze as I turned each page or is it as I swipe my phone screen. I really need a physical copy of this book just to have and hold and cherish forever. So Teef has a tortured hero complex. As a half fish, he feels as, he's, as if he's got this responsibility to protect all these magical fish from the fishermen. And then the fishermen like torture and abuse him for this. And yet he knows this, but he keeps going back each time. He's got, he's got a savior complex. He's got a tortured hero complex. And yeah, he does this to have this sense of purpose because he is technically a monster. He can't swim well enough to leave the island. He's just trapped there forever. So I guess it gives him something to do. He's also abandoned and unloved and naive, but yeah, saving the fish is his purpose. And he feels so realistic as a character. And that's a really weird thing to say about a fish boy, but he just feels so real and human and i just want anyone watching this video to go read this book and meet him and care about him and fall in love with him too but do be aware that with this torture and abuse around his character that there is some graphic content and these scenes may be triggering for some readers so i said earlier that the rudy and teeth relationship stole my heart but it just completely broke it too and I have a very complicated relationship with the ending of this book. On one hand, the writing is so raw that the ending makes sense. Because it emphasises all these chapters of brutality and blood and darkness that came throughout this book. So giving it ha a happy ending wouldn't make sense with all of this building that has come up to the ending. On the other hand, this is where the spoilers are, by, by the way. The Rudy and Teeth relationship is unfinished, I'd say, because they've spent this entire book growing close to each other, from an almost enemies to kind of friends relationship, but they just get like... <laughs> Personally, my interpretation is that they might have loved each other, or have been on the verge of that, like deep, deep, deep down. But at the ending, they're just torn apart so suddenly that they never reach like the lovers part, the enemies to lovers on page, and there's no closure, which ugh, I am far too emotionally attached to these characters to have no closure. And I don't want a sequel. I don't even want a short story just clarifying things. I, I just want to hurt in peace. But yeah, I think this is probably the only book in existence that I've read to where I wanted a kiss scene. So in conclusion, if you're looking for a very twisted fairy tale of magic and miracles and teeth and tears, this is for you and for me, mostly for me, but also for you. This book deserves like all the loves and the reads and the stars and I want to throw myself into the ocean. Thank you. <laughs> so on Goodreads I gave this five stars, which I'm gonna clarify is the full five stars, not a 4.5, not a full round up full five stars and that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.